Welcome to DIY Easy Crafts and BergKnifeMaking.com. Today we're going to take a look at advanced electro etching, creating functional metal art. Now in this video, we're actually going to follow step-by-step -step instructions on how I created uh, this full blade etching, which, is, uh, which depicts a deer in the woods. And if you notice, it's a two-tone etching. Uh, so the grass is in front of the trees, uh, the deer is in the background, etc. My etching starts uh, on a Silhouette Cameo vinyl cutting machine. It's a craft vinyl cutting machine. You can import uh, different images onto this, little silhouette images, and then the, the machine will actually trace them. So an example of that would be to import a picture of a bird or a silhouette of a bird. The Silhouette Cameo software will trace that. So the red lines are now the cut lines. You can resize that however you want it, and flip it. And that's basically what I've done for a variety of different objects. I'm going to combine a couple of different techniques with this, with this project. I'm going to hand cut out the trees, uh, but the deer and the birds and the owl and the squirrel and the, uh, the woodpecker, uh, etc., I imported and had the, the uh, Silhouette Cameo trace. Uh, the grass I created on a uh, graphic art program and also had the Cameo software trace that. And then I'm going to combine all of these elements onto the blade during the etching process. So for electro etching, I'm using a car battery charger, a 12 volt battery charger. I've got uh, this piece of uh, tubing, which is welded onto a flat plate. I've tapped a hole in the side of the tubing and I secured my uh, negative ground off the battery charger. The positive ground clip will get clipped right onto the blade or the metal that you're working on. Like I said before, this is a 12 volt uh, battery charger. This is an old one. It's not one of the new smart chargers that would short out. You're, in addition, you're going to need an electrolyte solution. I'm going to be st um, etching stainless steel today, so I'm using a stainless electrolyte solution I found on eBay. But if you were etching high carbon, just salt water. I also like uh, angled tweezers. These are nice and sharp. They're really good for picking out small items. And some alcohol wipes to clean the blade and get rid of all uh, grease, even from your hands, before you start to, to etch. Now, that steel plate welded to the tubing, I wrap with gauze. And then we're going to saturate that with the electrolyte solution. You want it to be damp, not completely soaking, soaking wet. I covered the blade completely with self-adhesive vinyl, and then I just basically just hand drew the trees. These are pretty straightforward. Just the trunks of the trees. I did add an element of a hole in the tree that I could um, put the owl into later, and then I cut those out with a arts and craft razor knife. Now, if you also notice, I did also coat the back of the blade with the same self-adhesive vinyl. And the purpose of that is to prevent any moisture, any excess moisture, uh, from during the etching from getting at the back of the blade. If the back of the blade gets wet, it's going to inadvertently get etched, and, and you don't want that. So now what I'm doing is I'm removing all of the material around the trees. Using this process, basically anything that's covered with vinyl is not going to get etched. The vinyl is the resist, and any metal that is exposed will get etched. So the trees are going to end up being shiny. Now I'm going to add the deer. The deer is also the prime focus of this particular um, design. I'm using a transfer film, but if you notice I have not picked out or weeded that vinyl away from, from the deer at this point prior to transfer. For some of the finer lines, I find that it's, it's easier to adhere the entire uh, square of vinyl onto the, the steel and then weed it once it's in place. This way the vinyl has less chance of folding over on itself or of small items ripping, etc. So I'm just going to place that visually where I want it in between the two trees, making sure that the deer's antlers you know, are not going above the top of the knife. 
And then with the pliers, very carefully, I'm going to weed out all of the extra material around the deer. So because I want the deer to end up being shiny, I want that vinyl to stay on the deer and on the antlers. Now this process does take a little while and, and you, you certainly need a set of good eyes, but it's not difficult. So now the deer is in place. And the trees are in place. And note that the one tree on, your, on the right of the screen is going to go actually up to the, uh, the stainless bolsters. That's important because you don't want etched area or depth going under the bolsters because food particles, etc. could get under there. This way we have a nice clean surface. Now I'm going to apply uh, the grass. This is going to get applied over the deer and over the trees. Now you have to think about it a little bit. This is going to be a two-tone etching. The grass is going to be a lighter tone than the background. So we're going to want to etch the background first for the longest amount of time, then remove the grass, and then etch the grass for a shorter amount of time. Because I want the grass to look like it's in front of the deer and of the trees, I'm going to use that same razor knife to cut along each one of the blades of grass through the deer and through the trees so that later, after I start the etching process and I remove the grass, I'm also going to re be removing whatever vinyl is underneath each blade of grass. And you'll see that later. Notice that I've, I've also put in place now the squirrel and the birds, etc. Um, or at least on that picture. That's a close-up of the cutout that I was doing on the grass. So here I'm going to lay in some of the details. These are the, uh, the leaves, the branches of leaves that I'm going to adhere to each of the bigger branches which I hand drew. And you can add as much detail as you want to these things. And you certainly don't have to use a deer in the woods as your theme. You can come up with almost, almost any design you can come up with. All right, so here I've got the squirrel in place, the woodpecker, is a flying bird over on the right hand side. I'm going to add the owl into the hole, the cutout hole on the tree. Notice I'm using my tweezer to push down right at the base of the owl because there'll be a little lip there where the owl vinyl overlaps the tree vinyl. Any gap, uh, moisture or electrolyte solution will flow underneath it and it would etch. So this is the blade with all of the vinyl in place ready to start etching. As I mentioned before, I'm going to etch with a 12-volt battery charger. This is one of the old dumb chargers. Um, it's not a, uh, one of the new smart chargers that would short out and shut off as soon as you started to etch. Uh, if, you, if you don't have one of the older ones, you, you'll have to dig up another or a different power supply. I'm using 12 volts, 2 amps. The gauze uh, is dampened with the stainless steel electrolyte solution. And what I do is I etch for about 20 or 30 seconds at a time, and then I, I give it a little bit of a break, I let it cool down, and then I etch for another 20 or 30 seconds. And all of the deep areas are gonna get etched for between three and four minutes. Uh, in, in 20 to 30 second inc increments, um, and after each minute, I'll actually cool off the back of the blade by running it under cold water. You don't wanna generate too much heat. You know, my fear is always that um, too much heat, the vinyl, the self-adhesive vinyl is going to lose its adhesion uh, and then you'll, you'll etch where you don't want to etch. So after, you know, three and a half minutes or so, in those small increments of time, then I'm going to re remove the grass and also the owl, both of which I want to be a lighter tone. So they're also, they're both going to get etched, they're just not going to get etched uh, for, the, for the three and a half minutes that the main
background is going to get etched for. So I'm checking the temperature there. And the reason I use a piece of steel uh, this long is because I can do the entire blade etching kind of in one shot. So now I'm going to remove the grass very carefully. You know, sometimes those little cutouts that you did with the razor don't go all the way through. You just want to be real careful that you don't lift off uh, any of the tree or any of the deer that's not underneath the blades of grass. So in this case, the tree did not lift off. The base of the tree did not lift off. So I'm going to go back and, and I can reuse a razor knife. I can use the tweezers. And carefully get rid of any vinyl that's, that's not supposed to be there at this point. So once all of the grass is removed, and if you notice the owl is also removed, I'm now going to etch these area, this area for a much shorter amount of time. I'm still going to do it in, in 10 to 15, sometimes 20 second increments. Um, I'm going to do it for probably a total of about a minute. It really depends on the, on the steel that you're using. But substantially shorter amount of time than the main body. Now, while you're etching the grass and the owl, uh, all of the original areas are still exposed, so they are actually getting etched deeper at the same time. Now, once I'm satisfied that the edge is deep enough, then I can start to peel the vinyl. I really get a kick out of this process because, you know, while you're working on it, you really, you're never 100% sure what the end result is going to look like until the final cleanup. I'm going to peel off all of the little pieces of vinyl. I'm then going to uh, clean this very quickly with some soap and water. Now at, this at this point, the battery charger is off. I can disconnect uh, the leads. And after I clean it with soap and water, I'm going to take it into the garage and give it a quick rub down uh, with 500 grit emery cloth. And this is going to this is going to be what shows us what the final result is going to look like. Quick rub down with 500 grit, wipe it clean. And I, I've been doing this for a couple of years now. I think to date, this is probably, probably the best etching I've done. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the show. I'm going to show you a couple of images of the finished product now uh, after the knife is complete. I added stainless steel uh, bolsters and uh, custom scales from Rob Carper, but you can see all the details in the etch. The woodpecker, the squirrel, the flying bird, the deer, uh, the grass is two-tone and lighter than the background. The owl, the owl is two-tone, lighter than the background. This is now the, the finished blade. Beautiful uh, AEBL stainless steel, ready for use in the kitchen. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, I ask that you please give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the YouTube channel, and, and maybe you could take the time and just comment on this, uh, on this channel. Uh, please check us out on the web at DIYEasyCrafts.com. If you're interested in any of my custom knives, uh, BergKnifeMaking.com. 
And please join us on Facebook, on our uh, Facebook group, Knives and Knife Making. Thank you very much.